Hello folks, it's Nana Gel54 Janet. Hello, and um like always a hot mess. I I had to uh I have to do Christmas really abrupt because I was thinking that my kids could this is the year that they are with their, you know, with the other side of the family. Um, but usually we get together after. And they live in North Carolina, South Carolina, and um so we were talking to them and one family just bought uh, a house and uh, fixer upper and they're working hard and and uh, they uh, the husband was very sick with uh, COVID and uh, he's recovering praise God but you know they got to take it slow and stuff so the other ones just um, just finished building a barn and you know bought a tractor and all that kind of stuff so their finances you know even if we help them uh, they can't, they can't, they can't take the time to come down from their jobs and stuff. So, you know, you, you hope until, until you, you, you get a solid no. So I got a solid no. And, um, say hi, Petunia. Oh, you, well, I have to put your, your delicious, um, uh, your Halloween costume away. Okay. So anyway, I got to get her Christmas gear out. So I decided, well, I don't want to mail everything. That's crazy. And I still like to buy them presents. So we're going to be, our friends are going to be coming here and staying here while we're heading out. And so I only have six days to get Christmas together to take. Um, plus I have a whole bunch of stuff that I've been collecting for my daughter for when she got her house. So we're going to be, I have an RV, we're going to be packed. The car's going to be packed. Every seat in the RV is going to be packed, except for the driver's seat and the passenger seat. Uh, I'm even going to have stuff on the beds, uh, you know. So anyway, um, I went out to do Christmas this morning. Long story short, I went to another part of town that I never go to, you know, by myself. Actually, I don't think I've ever gone shopping there. And it's about 30 minutes away. And so I went. And I was coming, I found out the Hobby Lobby there and uh, I came out and I got in my car and my husband always says, put your, keep your head on a swivel, you know, look around, be careful, you know, not everybody drives safe and you be safe. So I'm driving um, through the parking lot and this guy comes out from between cars in the parking lot and he's cutting through the parking lot and he hits the front, the front side fender of my car right right in front of my front tire thank the lord he didn't crunch the um the light the headlight but it put a nice dent in the car and it's a it's my husband's junky car um i'm you know it could have been so much worse you know and the drive the car was drivable but i you know the man pulled over right away there was something leaking on the ground and I stopped my car right where right where it happened because I wanted to make sure I took pictures. And uh, it was in the parking lot, so people saw and they were staying away from us. And so anyway, I um, asked him first, are you all right? And I looked and there was a lady sitting in the passenger seat. And he said, yes, we're all right. He pulled his car over and parked. And I couldn't tell whether it was his car or mine that was leaking. So, so first I want to know if everybody was okay and then he came over to me and he looked at me and I think he was gonna like try to say something and I looked at him and I did very sincerely and I said you were cutting through the parking lot weren't you and he was yeah like that and I was you know I mean I felt bad for him because I know how I I, I backed into a car a long time ago parked car I don't know what I was thinking but I smashed a new car and I know what it's like to have to pay for that stuff so um, I felt bad for him but I felt bad for me I'm getting ready to go on you know on a trip that I'm gonna pull this little car behind the RV and I can't really afford to put this little R this little car out of service so anyway we exchanged we exchanged information I said to him I said you know it happened in a parking lot the police are not going to do anything except exchange our information, which we can do. If you don't want to, I won't involve the police as long as you have insurance. He said, I have insurance, but he said, you know what? I said, if you want to, you know, if you want, if you want to pay for my damage, it's an old car, not 
you know, it's not like a new car with a lot of damage. If you, you know, if you want to, you know, I'll call my husband, have him come out and we'll, you know, agree upon whatever. And, you know, we can take care of it. And he, and he went back to it and talked to his wife and he came back and he looked at me in his car. His car was nice. It was nicer than mine, but you know, I, I could tell that they weren't, you know, they were like, you know, they weren't people of means. It was a nice car, but it wasn't like an expensive car. So, and it was several years old, uh, you know, uh, a little, a little newer than mine, but m mine's pretty old. So anyway, um, he said, no, I, I have to let it go through my insurance. So that told me that he doesn't, you know, he doesn't have the cash on hand. He's going to suffer the blow from his insurance. You know, he'd rather have his insurance go up than try to come up with the money. So I was like, okay, if you're sure. So we called and the police came and they, you know, yada, yada, yada. And now a days everything's done on uh, on computer or you know on an app or whatever so when I got home from my shopping I tried to um I tried to call the insurance his insurance company it's what the police officer said for me to do when you get done today call the here's your information here you know he gave me the print up of the incident and everything so I couldn't get through and it said I had a 45 minute wait I was like, I, oh heck no, I'm not. So I put in, I punched in the information that it said to punch in on the, on the website. And it says, oh, someone's already filed, a, filed that claim. You know, um, please call this number uh, so that we can uh, add to the information. And I touched the thing to call the number and the, the number no, doesn't exist. So Geico has to, oh, sorry. Well, anyway, Geico has to up their game on their, on, on their website because that phone number is bogus. So anyway, I, you know, just sent the information off and now I have to wait and hear from them. So that was my story. Be careful in the parking lots. People are not doing what they're supposed to do. I was making a straight, I was going toward, you know, where it says the exit. I was going in the line, you know, where the arrows are that you're supposed to. This guy came from park cars in between and like this and hit me. So be careful. And I'll, I have a haul, I'm gonna do that next, but I just wanted to give you a little, you know, um, FYI, be very careful in parking lots. You know, I mean, I was looking around thinking, wow, this is a nice area. It's not crowded like where I live. I can find a parking place and everything in these, and I'm thinking, you know, life is wonderful and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and out of the clear blue sky, kaboom. <laughs> so. God's good, no one was hurt, and things will get taken care of. And Petunia says she loves you. We'll see you in a second.